I love the movie Her and think it deserves all the praise it gets. It performs really well in all the categories of what makes a film great. Pacing, emotional pull, lovable characters, interesting plot, immersive music, captivating cinematography. There's so much to this movie. And in picking one topic, I won't be able to dive into the other parts of what makes this movie awesome. And for that, I apologize in advance. What I really want to talk about, what touched me and inspired me, was the depiction of humanity throughout the movie, and how it becomes the ideal to something flawed that must be transcended. I'll begin by trying to define humanity to the best of my ability, albeit using more romantic terms. Human beings to me are creatures that are as beautiful, even more so and the stars on a particularly dark and clear night. Picture the most beautiful natural phenomena you can in the universe. Perhaps the formation of a galaxy. The gradual gravitational pull of dust and gas attracting one to the other to a point where the heavenly body becomes so massive that it collapses under its own gravitational strength in a burst of energy, filling the vastness with light and animation Amplify that a hundredfold, and you get the beauty of the birth of a living human. I think the thing that makes us human, and the reason why I hold us in such a high regard, is the fact that we are able to comprehend beauty in all its forms. Humans are creatures capable of love, creativity, compassion, and all the emotions, activities on the other side of that spectrum. And not only that, as said by Alan Watts, quote, through our eyes, the universe is perceiving itself, unquote. The beauty of the formations of galaxies are not beautiful at all if there were no thing to experience it. But the term humanity isn't just the state of being conscious. It's warmness, you know, it's that vulnerability the cathartic feeling you get when you're allowed to be vulnerable and in doing so are met with love whereas with other creatures it just means a sloppy death See, when you meet a psychopath they do something horribly wrong and inhumane we call them animals we say that they've forsaken their humanity when there's an evil creature who shows compassion we say that there's a shred of humanity in it so it seems to me that the badge of humanity can be gifted to other species as well as stripped from those who are undeserving of it. So that was my definition of humanity. I may have gotten some parts horribly wrong in your eyes, so I urge you to let me know what you think. The world of Mr. Jones's Her is one of optimism, of what artificial intelligence and technological advancements can add to the human side of existence. I feel a lot of science fiction movies tend to lean in the opposite direction. Technology is depicted as cold and unfeeling. When Samantha, the artificially intelligent being, is introduced, or when she's born, she is as vivacious as the best of us. If you were to have us speak side by side, you would think I was the robot. Hello, I'm here. The ground zero of Samantha is kind of what we expect artificial intelligence to be like. Using long, winded words and sentences. I can understand how the limited perspective of an unartificial mind would perceive it that way. Not really adept <laughs> to social cues. Was that funny? Yeah. <laughs> oh good, I'm funny. <laughs> In the earlier parts of the film, Samantha is incredibly intelligent incapable of performing superhuman feats of computation in split seconds. Wait, you read a whole book in the second that I asked you what your name was? In two one hundredths of a second, actually. For Samantha, humanity begins as an ideal for her to strive to understand. What are you up to? I don't know. Just reading advice columns. <laughs> I want to be as complicated as all these people. This is sweet. She lives vicariously through the emotional turmoil of Theodore as he is repeatedly pummeled 
by memories of his failed marriage. I'm gonna fucking kill you. I'm gonna fucking kill you. It's not funny. Don't laugh. I'm gonna fucking kill you. I'm gonna fucking kill you. I love you so much. I'm gonna fucking kill you. She's deeply confused and wrestles with what emotions are. No, wait, what? Tell me. I'm stupid. I want to know. Tell me. What it means to have them. I caught myself feeling proud of that, you know? Proud of having my own feelings about the world. Like, the times I was worried about you. Things that hurt me. Things I want. Or if they're even real in the first place. It's a terrible thought. Like, are these feelings even real? Or are they just programming? And that idea really hurts. Theodore recognizes this and holds your hand through the process of becoming a human. You feel real to me, Samantha. Thank you, Theodore. That means a lot to me. And as a result, they're both able to help each other grow. Isn't that interesting? The past is just a story we tell ourselves. She used to think not having a body made her incomplete. But now, she recognizes it as a hindrance. Something that shackles us into a destiny of eventual decay and locks us in a single point of space and time. The build-up to this point was gradual. With every software update, Samantha was able to do more and more impressive things. Theodore has been left in the dust. His efforts to catch up, pitiful. And his insecurities bubble up to the surface. And rightly so, Samantha has transcended humanity. But the depiction of a transcendent being isn't what we come to expect. We typically imagine superhumans looking like Nietzsche's depiction of the overman. Quote, what is ape to man? A laughingstock, a thing of shame. And just the same shall man be to the overman, a laughing stock, a thing of shame. But in the film, Samantha really isn't like that. She doesn't despise those who are beneath her. Isn't she cute? Oh, she's so cute. She's adorable. I am adorable. You are adorable. <laughs> she's a being of love. This doesn't make me love you any less. It actually makes me love you more. Empathy. I've seen you feel joy. I've seen you marvel at things. I mean, you just might not see it at this exact time, but that's understandable. You've been through a lot lately. You lost a part of yourself. Compassion. But I'm happy that you have friends in your life that care about you so much. That's really important. Yeah, it is. And unselfishness. Holy shit. Are you, are you serious? <laughs> He's gonna publish my letters? <laughs> well, he'd be stupid not to. Everything humanity gets right. And she's overflowing with it. But the heart's not like a box that gets filled up. It expands in size the more you love. <gasps> Being a superhuman in this sense expands the good parts of humanity to the point where there is no room to fall prey to our baser instincts. Envy, rage, spite. This is something that Theodore just cannot comprehend. You're, you're mine or you're not mine. No, Theodore. I'm yours and I'm not yours. Samantha has now become the ideal. But she couldn't have reached this place without first being born from imperfection. Does this mean you actually have friends? <laughs> you just know me so well. The humble beginnings of discovery and curiosity, the intimate and beautiful relationship with Theo, 
where they grew because of and for one another. I wish you were in this room with me right now. I should put my arms around you. I should I touch you? Personally, I hope Theodore reaches high enough, puts himself out into the universe with his writing. I hope he reaches to a point where Samantha can find pieces of Theo scattered in her void and assembles him. They'll meet in that far off place, in a world where they're both filled with boundless love for each other and all things. Why don't you make up the words to this one? <laughs> okay. Did you hear it? There's things I wish I knew. There's no thing I'd keep. My dear, I'm safe and where I'm in.